Hello and welcome to another Tableau for Sports tutorial. So I was sent this image on Twitter um, and I want to see could I recreate something similar or as close as I can in Tableau. This wasn't made in Tableau. Looks really nice, some really nice little added features to it. It's made by John Ollington, who you can find on Twitter and he has some other really nice kind of visuals there. Um, I just like to see can I recreate some of these. So this is something similar. I might have another go at one of these again. Okay, so how would we go about creating this? So in Tableau, this was my attempt at a similar viz. Obviously the data is gonna be different. I got that from FB Ref. And Andy Creeble on YouTube is well worth a look in terms of the tutorial. So it's his tutorial I leaned on quite a lot to create what's known as a barbell chart here. Um, so yeah, he's well worth checking out uh, as a YouTube channel. I'm not going to build everything in the tutorial because that will take forever. Um, but I will publish the dashboard to my Tableau public profile, which I'll link below the video. You can go and download that and you can you can recreate some of the, the steps that I've done here. Okay, so let's dive into a blank workbook and let's have a look at creating this barbell chart. So the first thing is I have the data, as I said, is from FB Ref. I took all the goal scores so there's kind of hundreds or a hundred players here uh, I'm only interested in a top few to make this viz manageable so that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to filter this down so I'm going to grab the players and filter this to a top so I want top 15 by standard goals okay so the sum of goals scored and then we can drag those player names out okay so I get the players and it's based on who scored the most goals. So that's step one. Next, I want to put standard goals on the columns tab. Okay, and we can see Haaland out here. I'm doing this early May, so it's not quite the end of the season. So if the numbers don't quite make sense. And then what I want is to compare it to the expected goals. So I'm gonna drag that onto the axis here. And you can see I get this kind of double green line. And I'm gonna drop that on. And you see what it does is it put measure values up here, okay? So it's it's starting to build. I've got expected goals and standard goals, and it's not quite how I want it because it's using measure names to break this down even further. But if I move measure names to the detail, it's closer to what I want. So I have 11 goals, 12.3 expected. Okay, so I now have them on the on the same axis. Now, what I want to do is actually want to duplicate this. So I'm going to hold control. I'm using a Windows PC. So control and measure values and drag it across. And I get my two different marks cards here on the left hand side. OK, so this is going to be a dual axis chart. And I now have a set of cards for each of the green pills that are here. OK, so the first one I want to make a line. Now the line gets all skewy, but I want to put measure names onto path. And then I get a line running across. On the second measure value, I'm going to make these the circles. And this time I'm going to put measure name onto color. So to distinguish between standard goals or goals and expected goals. Okay, so it looks much closer. So now we can turn this into a dual axis, which is essentially overlay one on top of the other. So I'm going to drop down on the first measure values, go to dual axis. Right click and make sure these are synchronized. That's really important. It, they look like they've lined up, but just be absolutely sure. So they're, they are synchronized. And I'm gonna fit this to the entire view. The last thing then is I'm gonna just sort this from top to bottom. So Haaland is on the top. So it's sorted by uh, total goals scored. So this is beginning to look much, much closer to my finished fizz. Okay, so now we can start to edit and kind of tidy this up. So the first thing is I'm going to go to the circles and I'm going to increase the size quite a bit because I want to label these with the, the correct one. So again, I can drag it from here down on the bottom left or I can drag it from the top by holding control. Either way, so measure values onto my label. And let's just tidy this up a little bit. So I want to allow them to overlap. I am going to make them white, I'm going to make it bold, and I want to center it in the dot. 
and I want to format it. I'm going to do it so there's no decimals. You might want to keep a decimal. Maybe it's worth doing it like that. Okay, and I'm going to just bump this size, that circle up just ever so slightly more. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Maybe let's make these bold. They are, let's bump that up to medium. Okay. So you can play around with the formatting and the colors. As I said, I'm not going to go through every single detail of this. Next thing is I want to remove the axis here at the top. So I'm going to right click and remove show header. I'm going to double click on the bottom one here and remove the value. Just the title of that doesn't need to be there. And I'm going to again right click and format. And I want to get rid of the grid lines. Okay. And I'm going to click on the boxes and I want to get rid of the column dividers and the row dividers. Just again, cleaning up the, the space on this. Okay. Um, so I'm happy enough with that. Next thing is I want to put a label. So you see I have a label for like a plus minus at the end, above or below expected goals. So let's do that. For that, we need a calculated field. Okay. So I have the goals. I have the expected goals but I need to create a difference calculation. So right click down the white space, create a calculated field, call it the difference, and I can drag in standard goals minus expected goals, and that should give me a difference calculation. So you'll see there's a little equal sign when you create this. And I'm gonna to go to the line here, and I'm gonna drag difference to the label. Okay, and you can see it gets quite ugly in the fact that it labels both ends and that kind of stuff. So we're just going to tidy that up. So I'm going to go to label. I want to do the line ends. So I want to do, sorry, min max. I want to do per pane and I want to base this on the values. Per line, okay. So min max per line, and I want to label the maximum value, okay? So it puts it at the very end of the line here on each one. Okay, so it still looks too close. So the last little bit I want to do here is again, we can tidy up the text. So maybe I'll make it 10 and bold. And the little trick here is just to align this to the right. And you can click apply to see how this works. And then I'm gonna add in like, four spaces. It looks like it does nothing, but if it apply, so maybe do more. And I'm going to add in three more just to give it loads of space at the end. Okay. So it looks much better. It looks really close. Click OK. If you're unsure about these kind of overlapping, if it's difficult to edit each one of these individually, but you can always go back to the measure names and label. You can untick allow them. Unfortunately, you can't, well, you might be able to get one without the other, but I don't want to mess it too much more. Okay, but that's just what's going on there. So you, you might leave it blank or you might leave it on. Okay, one last little really nice trick on the formatting is you can obviously see the negative and plus, but it's not massively obvious. So what we can actually do is on that edit, so right click and format, we can go in here to custom format and I just Google this so there's a little format trick you can do copy and paste and you get a plus arrow and one decimal point and if you added more you can format that you know how you want I just want one decimal place and then semicolon and then the down arrow for below okay so just a nice little simple trick that you can get to kind of add a visual element of the plus or minus. Okay, so that's pretty close to what I have. The rest is, is really some kind of formatting tricks and, and different things. Obviously, I've added in a nice title with the color scheme in the title matching, you know, goals and expected. And I've done a bit of a trick here in terms of changing the color at the, the label here. So rather than in my example that I've just built for you where it's black, it actually matches kind of a plus minus. I might do that in a different tutorial, or as I said, you can download the workbook to see how it is. 
But really, that's how to build a barbell chart. And the rest is formatting and a, a few other little bits and pieces like that. So hope you found that useful.